Hi everybody, this is Kevin again. And uh, you know, this is a study that I've been wanting to do for quite some time. But um, really, you know, there's a lot of uh, questions about like the millennial kingdom of Christ and what it will be like. And I know that the there are a lot of people out there that are amillennial, meaning they don't believe in a millennial reign of Christ. And uh, yet the Bible speaks of it and uh, speaks of it a lot, actually, much more than people think. So the question is, what will the millennial kingdom of Christ be like? I think what we're going to do is we're going to explore the scriptures that have to do with the millennial kingdom of Christ and find out what it will be like. Okay, so first of all, we're going to go to Revelation 20 verses 1 through 10, which that in itself gives a description about it happening and about it being a thousand years. Now elsewhere in the scriptures that we're going to look at, it doesn't describe how many years it's going to be, but here in Revelation 20 it does. So uh, first of all, I'm going to read this, uh, this passage. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed his little season. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the, the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Okay, so you see here that there's the millennial reign of Christ, uh, and then, you know, Satan, he's bound in, the, in the, the bottomless pit for that time. He can't deceive the nations. And then he gets loosed for a season. He goes out, deceives people, creates an army, gather, gathers around the camp of the saints, around Jerusalem, and then God destroys that, that wicked army of Satan with fire, and then, uh, and then the devil finally gets cast into the lake of fire, and uh, you know he's not able to do anything anymore, no longer able to deceive anybody, no longer able to roam free, but he will finally be in his final place of torment where we all want him to be okay <laughs> it says he shall be tormented day and night forever and ever praise God okay now we're gonna go into prophecies of the millennial kingdom of Christ in the Old Testament first of all Jeremiah 23 5 through 6 behold the days come saith the Lord that I will raise unto David a righteous branch and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Okay. Zechariah 14, 3 through 9. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley, 
and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal, yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee, and it shall come to pass that in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And, and it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. Praise God. Ezekiel 37, 21 through 25. I don't know why I got the 21, 21. Okay. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all of their dwelling places, of all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned, and will cleanse them, so shall they be my people, and I will be their God. And David my servant shall be king over them, and they shall they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in my judgments, and observe my statutes, and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and their children, and their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Now I want to I want to just stop here and remind you that, and I'm going to show you later in the the uh, timeline. Ezekiel the prophet, <clears throat> you know, came way after David lived his life. Okay, so this is speaking of uh, of. David as far as it's speaking of Jesus really but it's speaking of Jesus as being in the lineage of David okay he's going to be the king like David okay so that's who we're speaking of here we're speaking of Jesus Christ the Messiah okay and yeah it's using this name David but David had already lived and died before Ezekiel wrote this before he even was alive okay this was really awesome right here this gives you a really good feel for what things will be like during that millennial kingdom. Isaiah 11, 6 through 10. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them, and the cow and the bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down together, and the, the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the sucking child shall play in the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. <clears throat> they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy, my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. I'm going to go back there. Okay, uh, notice that, you know, root of Jesse. Jesus is from the root of Jesse, okay? But but look at this. Um, you know, the wolf and the lamb are going to dwell together. They're not going to, the wolf's not going to attack the lamb anymore. The, the leopard will lay down, lie down with the kid. Uh, you know, the calf and the young lion and the fatling together. I mean, uh, I just think about this. The young, the, uh, let's see, the, uh, the lion shall eat straw like the ox. You see what it's saying here? There's going to be complete peace among the animals during this time frame. 
even the, all of the, the animals will get along and not kill each other. There won't be any more carnivores. The lion will be an herbivore, and the bear will be an herbivore, and the wolf. All of the carnivores will be herbivores. They will no longer kill each other. And children could play around with a, with a snake and not get bitten. You know, the snakes won't bite, bite people anymore. <laughs> I mean, when have you seen this happen? Those of you who are, are preterists, uh, are you going to try to, uh, you know, make a metaphor out of this? Really? To me, this looks like something that is true. It's real. It's going to happen. But it has not happened yet. But it will happen during that millennial kingdom. Isaiah 65, 19 through 25. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence an infant of days, nor an old man that hath not filled his days. For the child shall die an hundred years old, but the sinner, being an hundred years old, shall be accursed. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, <clears throat> and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. For they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock, and dust shall be the serpent's meat." They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountains, saith the Lord. There you get another reference there again about the wolf and the lamb feeding together. Okay, and this is Isaiah 65. Um, you know, basically, this is another description of what we are going to see going on during the millennial kingdom. Isaiah 9, 6 or 7. For unto us, unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. This is a description, again, of Jesus Christ, okay, and and being that the government's going to be upon his shoulder. He's going to have this, this government's going to be under his control, okay, and he's going to sit upon the throne of David. There again, that reference to David again, okay. Um, anyway. This is another description there again of Jesus' kingdom, his future kingdom, millennial kingdom, okay? Isaiah 2, 2 through 4. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. That's another thing. There's going to be complete peace. People will beat their, their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks. Okay, so there's not going to be nation going to war with nation anymore because it's going to be a completely peaceful time during that time period. Uh, and I, I basically consider it it's a time, uh, I think that it compares with the day of rest, the Sabbath day. Okay, it's the Sabbath day. It's a, it's a millennial kingdom when Jesus Christ is in charge from Jerusalem and he's going to, you know, judge among the nations, okay? And it's not that there won't be sometimes that people are going to do wrong. They will, but they're going to be judged for it. And but the main thing is there's not going to be war during this time period either, 
Okay? And remember, Satan is, is bound in the bottomless pit at this point as well. Zechariah 14, 16 through 19, And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Hmm. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord shall sm will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So there again, that's kind of be a requirement during the, the Millennial Kingdom to come up once a year to, to uh, celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, okay? And the Feast of Tabernacles is, is a really uh, phenomenal feast. If you look up in the Bible, you find out about the Feast of Tabernacles, okay? That uh, lasts uh, basically seven days, okay? And uh, and it's not a bad time. It's a great time. It's a great feast of the Lord. And it's actually the seventh one. It's the final feast of the Lord, the seventh feast of the Lord, okay? So that's going to be a requirement to uh, basically come up, worship Jesus, and uh, celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, so now I promised you this. I'm going to look at the timeline from David until the Babylonian captivity of Judah. Not just that, but I'm going to go a little bit further. I'm going to go in to show you these different prophets, okay? And show you that they came well after, well after David when he lived, okay? Okay, so this is at this website, BibleStudy.org. And it's a timeline of the Bible. I'm, you know, it starts up here. Um, up here with God creating an Ad, Adam and Eve. And this is kind of based on the Usher chronology. Some up partly, or it says places creation at 4004, while other uh, research suggests a date of 4024. But they've got it over here as 3969. Either way, this goes through the timeline. Okay. So I'm going to go way down here, and I'm going to show you where David is. Okay, here we go. Um, King David, okay, you see right there, King Saul. Then you see King David reigns over Israel. He writes Psalms 1 through 71, 101 to 119, 135 to 150. And that was from the year 1010 B.C. to 970 B.C. And remember that the smaller number in B.C. is closer to us in other words it's further in time so 1010 was further back 970 is closer to us so from 1010 to 970 bc now we go down we look through all this time frame after solomon remember after solomon that's when israel splits into two kingdoms the kingdom of israel the kingdom of judah okay uh they have the 19 kings of Israel from 930 to 723, period of 23 rulers over Judah from 930 to 586. You know, eventually, okay, so now we have down here, I'll just say this, 740 to 686 B.C., the books of Isaiah, 1 Kings, 1 Samuel, and 2 Samuel are written. Okay, remember all the prophecies that I gave you or that I read to you from Isaiah of the Millennial Kingdom and how a lot of times it spoke of the throne of David okay and about David ruling well this is way after David lived and died obviously he was speaking future of the Messiah okay so there you have Isaiah his time frame we go down further okay Jeremiah, book of Jeremiah, Psalm 89, and a part of 2 Kings written 627 to 585 B.C. There again, well after David. We keep going. We go down to, let's see, book of Daniel. I didn't read from Daniel, but there's a lot of good uh, prophecy in Daniel from 605 to 530 B.C. Uh, the, here we go, book of Ezekiel. I did quote from Ezekiel. 597 to 570 BC. Okay. There again. 
speaking of the millennial kingdom, is spoken of in Ezekiel. Okay. Um, I don't know if there was any other ones I needed to show you, but there's more, some more prophets even after them, more of those books that are written from the prophets. Finally, we get down to Jesus being born in Bethlehem. Okay. And then they stop at Herod the Great dies. Okay. So the rest is modern, more modern history that we already know. Okay. <laughs> but I just wanted to show show you all of that, and uh, I just hope that maybe this uh, study blessed you, and maybe gives you a little bit more uh, knowledge about what the millennial kingdom will be like. And um, all of us who are bride, the bride of Christ, the church, you know, we're going to come back with Jesus, and it and it shows that in Revelation 19 that we come back with him uh, to this earth from heaven, and uh, and then after that's when he sets up his millennial kingdom, and he will be with him during that time. So we're going to see all this happen in the future. We're going to see this happen. And uh, I think it's going to be quite a time. It's going to be a blessed time to finally see the world being ruled by God's rule, by his law, through Jesus. And he's the perfect ruler. He is the Messiah. He is God and man at the same time. And it's going to be a perfect time of, of ruling and reigning over this world and everything we're seeing going on today in this world is completely out of whack and not in line with God and his laws, not in line with holiness and righteousness at all. But things will be set right during that time frame. It's not going to be completely perfect because you can see there was time there are going to be certain people that are going to be uh you know in trouble. They're going to be chastised and so forth for not not doing everything exactly right, but more than more than not, most people are going to be enjoying a time of absolute peace and and just peace, righteousness, joy. It's going to be a time not like we've seen at all on this earth before now or before that time. So I just want to say uh, God bless you all, and I hope that you enjoyed this uh, study. I hope that you got something out of it. And uh, until then, uh, until the next study. God bless you all. Bye.